uh, the topic is choosing uh, right femoral stem so uh, we have been using in an uh, like cemented and uncemented stem we both, both uh, we are aware of both these stems so the cement first we will focus on the cemented implant so cemented implant there are two design characteristics they are force closed that is taper slip or a shape closed so force closed is a typically a polished implant which we commonly use that is the exeter implant it usually have a double or a c stem is a have a triple triple taper it, it is a call it is a non collared implant it doesn't have any ridges or profiles shape closed implants usually they have a matted uh, surface and they have taper they are collared and they have ridges and flanges for a, a cement anchorage so these are the implants which are we, we are using routinely chanley implant was a monoblock but uh, now we get uh, composite type 2 implants also as modular ones you should get at least 2 mm of cement all around the cement uh, all around the uh, implant we have seen uh, various registry data that the cemented hips have uh, have given good good track records long term 100% uh, survivorship at 20 years uh, and, and and survival uh, of around 98.7% uh, even the composite with the composite beams also various studies have shown 25 years survivorship of around 85 to 96 percent and even the modern day uh, designs is also an, a joint registry data showing that eight year survival rate is around 97.5 percent and the, even the chanless stems have stood 78 percent at 35 years so what is the difference between these two stems the composite and the taper slip there is a statistically significant increased revision rate in the composite group. So that means, as you can see the graph, that the, the exeter stem has surpassed the efficacy of all other cemented stems. Then the type of the cementing technique, first from first generation till fourth generation, like so this is a this is a review of impact of cementing technique on the aseptic loosening of in the total hip replacement. And the uh, overall aseptic loosening was about 5 to 5.8 percent, and there was no difference, or there was a minimal difference between the results uh, regarding the cementing technique. Now we move to the cementless stems. These are some parameters which we have previous speakers have spoken of that uh, you have to restore the limb length, you have to do a proper templating. So I will just go into the details of the stems. Biointegration usually it starts at around 4 to 12 weeks. And it may continue up to three week, uh, three years, and uh, the micro motion should be minimal. Uh, like you should have a stable construct, and uh, if the motion is less than uh, 20 micrometers, it is predominantly bone. And if we load a construct, you can see, if if we can load a construct, you can see it is a, this is an unloaded construct. This is a histological picture. You can see if you, if the construct is loaded, there is a lot of bone formation, and this is the uh, you can see the amount of bone formation. Then there are uh, mechanisms wherein uh, there is bony ingrowth and bone, bone on growth. Hydroxyapatite implants are also there. Uh, we have, we are routinely using them. But there are studies which say that there is no difference between HA coated and non HA coated. But recently the data is coming that HA coated implants have a fewer uh, revisions, aseptic revisions, uh, and lesser uh, post operative uh, thigh pain. Stem material also, there is a comparison between co uh, chromium cobalt molybdenum alloys and titanium aluminium vanadium alloys. And titanium, because the modulus of elasticity is same as the bone, there are less thigh pain and stress shielding. The thigh pain is not only on account of stiffness of the metal, but it is also because of the stem geometry. Comparison of implants that has the same design and were made of different alloys shows no significant difference in the outcome rates of the thigh pain. So classification, it has been classified by Kanuja and et al. The basic classification was given by Berry. The, the stems basically from first to four stems basically they are straight stems and their anchorage is increasing. The fifth one is a modular one and sixth one is a anatomic uh, stems. So type one are the uh, stem wedge stems. Uh, they are, they are, these stems are a single wedge. They are flat AP and mediolaterally wide which provides the rotational stability. Then the type 2 stems are more broader than the single wedge stems. They are rounded and tapered at the end and they provide some uh, diaphyseal fixation for the rotational stability. They have 
shown good results. Then the type 3 stems, they are usually used for the revision situation. They are taper round Wagner type stems which are used for revision situations and then taper rectangle. This is one of the cases, there was a, a, a fall at home, periprosthetic fracture is salvaged by a Wagner cone. Then the type 4 stem, type 4 stem is the di provides the diaphyseal fixation, it is extensively coated and the proximal collar enhances the axial stability and transmits the forces to the calcar. And you need to do both distal reaming and the proximal broaching and you have to have a diaphyseal scratch fit. So one of the cases, periprosthetic fracture, which has been salvaged by a uh, solution, it, uh, you can see the, uh, the, uh, the cortical uh, hold in that, uh, that light is scratch fit. Then the modulus designs, they have a different metaphysial sleeve, this like a SROM or restoration stem, they have a metaphysial sleeve and they have a diaphyseal stem. Usually the metaphysial sleeve only integrates with the bone. This is one of the dysplastic patients where it was salvaged by a SROM. This is the, these are the anatomical stems, we don't have a personal experience with that. Then the, uh, this, uh, there are short stems, so Freehan defined that any stem which is, whose, whose length is less than, uh, total length is less than the twice the vertical distance between the tip of the grotter trochanter and the base of the lesser trochanter. So these are some uh, uh, uncemented stems, they are, they are classified according to the region they occupy or invade. So these are some proxima and the mitha hip and uh, these stems, the, we need, there are some studies which say there is an early loosening of these stems. This is one of the recent studies, 2021 International Orthopedics, the, it, is, it, is, it concluded that they are presenting that, uh, that in 698 uh, uh, hips. Uh, it was a short hydroxy appetite coated stem which was used and they were seeing some radiological alterations in that. So this warranted a mid and long term survivorship, further more uh, studies so that it can, uh, for, for their widespread use. And this is, uh, this was, with this slide I am concluding my talk that the cemented stems, everywhere people are using cementless stems, but this is the, that the cemented stem have given us a good track record and the, the concerns of uh, tumor uh, of the basically cement, cement implantations in elderly patient is now like it is not much if you if you are meticulous if you use high viscosity cement so uh, it is that in the patient which are elderly which are like even now also in elderly patients people are using uncemented stems but cemented stems also hold good thank you very much